Hello everyone, this is Alchemisted, and before I start the Metroid Prime playthrough proper, uh, there are just a couple things I want to go over. Uh, one of them is this, the tale of how I got Metroid Prime, uh, and how I know that it wasn't taken care of. You see, this copy of Metroid Prime is actually the second copy of Metroid Prime I got from this place, from this GameStop, and I know for a fact that uh, the first copy was gimped and I had to return it in for another one. Uh, the second one, whoever previously owned this copy of Metroid Prime did not take very good care of it. So, it will randomly freeze occasionally. It doesn't... It's very rare. It's very rare. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. So, fair warning, this will occasionally occur. Knowing my luck at the worst possible time. Moving on. Uh, but the reason I know that GameStop did not take particularly good care of this CD is because uh, when I went to get the second disc for Metroid Prime, I also did a little bit of shopping around in that particular GameStop. Uh, I may have picked up Echoes, and I know I picked up uh, Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader. Uh, and I believe I also picked up Siphon Filter Dark Mirror at the same time. Uh, I also w tried to get Jedi Starfighter 2. Uh, for those who weren't around or never played J the Jedi Starfighter series, Jedi Starfighter is essentially Colony Wars, but with Force powers. It's just as awesome as it sounds. Uh, it was it was actually a very very good space combat game. It was a bit on the arcadey side, but then again, so was Rogue Le so was Rogue Leader, you know the Rogue Squadron games, you know so was Colony Wars. It was probably it came out during the PlayStation Two, the first half of its lifespan, and uh, you know it was around the same time that you were getting games like Summoner Two and Time Splitters Two. It was it was in, it was in that early you know, early to halfway point of the PlayStation 2's projected lifespan uh, when this game came out. And uh, it was pretty fantastic. It was also the last of a dying genre, because I don't think there were very many other than Rogue Squadron 2 or 3. There were not very many space combat games coming out at that point. So this was really one of the only places you could go, unless you still unless you just felt like firing up old copies of Descent Free Space, if you know what I mean. Old copies of Wing Commander. This is the only new thing coming out. You know, old copies of Privateer. You know, whatever you had, basically. Man, that was, ugh, that was a sad day when, that, when those games started thinning out. That was really sad. Moving on. So I was trying to pick up a copy of Jedi Starfighter and a uh, Jedi Starfighter 2, and a box caught my eye. And this box was perfect. I mean, this game came out almost a decade ago, but th you wouldn't know it from looking at the box that I found. It, the plastic sheet on the outside was was pristine. The box art was intact. The manual was still inside. It was still crisp, like you know, like if you. Like those of you who bought who buy games, most people buy games digitally now. But those of you who bought games back in the day and had that really crisp manual, you know that really that really crisp feel. It was it was like that. It was fantastic. It was perfectly intact. It was like it had n maybe been opened a couple of times, but never really used. It was great. And that's important to us gamers. That's important to us because we don't want to look at the. At the and remember this because this will come up in just a second. We don't want to look at our shelf and see like the shitty generic GameStop uh, back, you know, the shitty generic Hollywood video back, you know, to it. We want to see the box art for that game. We want to be able to look at our shelf and at a glance know what that game is. Um, so that I found a copy of Jedi Starfighter with its box looking so good after all this time. I was thrilled. I was like, buy. Instant buy. I wouldn't have cared if it had cost 20 fucking dollars. I was getting it. Um, so I mosey on down to the checkout. And I hand the, and I hand the, uh, the clerk 
uh, it, was, it was a lady, I believe, uh, cop the box. And she starts looking through the store's database, and she comes up. We don't have a copy of Jedi Starfighter 2. And, uh, you know, I, I asked her to, like, check again. She checked again. We don't have it. And what she did next left me gobsmacked. I was speechless when I saw what she did. This perfect box that had to be at least, like, very close to 10 years old. This perfectly maintained game case. She takes it and she chucks it in the trash. She throws it in the shredder, basically. My jaw hit the floor. Like, okay, I know you don't have a copy of that game, but presumably you will. And when you do get a copy of that game, you're going to want to have a box to put it in. So why not keep that? Why not keep a record of what cases you have that don't have games in them, you know, and put them somewhere where they'll be safe and relatively intact? You know, it's. To mistreat something like that. And it was the most casual thing in the world. She just sort of chucked it out. And I couldn't believe what I had just seen. It, there was no hesitation or anything. She just chucked it, she just chucked it out. I was astonished. I, I was astonished to the point where I actually went through the store and struggled to find a copy of Jedi Starfighter. Like, there had to be a copy of it somewhere. There had to be a disc running around somewhere. You know, just so I could rescue that box. Um, because somebody took, like, whoever donated, whoever traded that game in to GameStop obviously took really good care of their games. And that was, it was, fu- to, you know, to chuck that away with no, you know, with little to no ceremony, just like toss it over your shoulder into the garbage, it was fucking heresy what the fuck are you doing you don't just do that you know and I know it's not me that feels this way I, I'd like to think that most gamers are very meticulous about the way they keep their games somebody put a lot of heart into take care, and c- care of that thing obviously they didn't give a sh- much of a shit about it when they traded it in because they traded it into GameStop but still I couldn't believe that. I dug through all kinds of play. I dug through the PlayStation 2 games all over the place, uh, most of which didn't even have CD sleeves, like the paper CD sleeves they stick them in. You know, they had this big basket full of CDs. Mo- a lot of them didn't even have that. They took really shitty care of their discs. Uh, I couldn't... I, I struggled to find one. And I couldn't. And that's the GameStop where this copy of Metroid Prime came from. So that's how I know that they did not take good care of this. Oh, hang on. Somebody's calling me. But yeah, that's the story of how I got this copy of Metroid Prime. That's how I know that this copy wasn't given the love it deserves... Uh, that's how I know why it freezes, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, it, it's just going to happen every once in a while. Not very often, though. But, yeah. Moving on from that, uh, one last thing I want to talk about in this video is that uh, Prime also holds a place in the franchise history as not really the first time Samus was voice acted, but the first time she would have been. Now, uh, this was in the form of an introduction read by Jennifer Hale, who is Samus's voice actress in the Prime games. Every time, every time you hear like Samus make like a surprised gasp or something, that's Jennifer Hale. Uh, Jennifer Hale is probably one of the more prolific voice actresses of this day and age. Pretty much everybody knows who she is now after Mass Effect, where she plays female Shepard. Uh, the reason I want to the reason I'm talking about this uh, is because her introduction is still on the disc. It's dummied out, but it's still in there. Uh, so what I wanted to do was I wanted to play a clip from Other M, uh, where that voice actress was reading her lines, and a clip of the introduction read by Jennifer Hale. Uh... No, not up for... Ch- I'm, on, I'm on Skype right now as well. Uh... 
And a brief clip of the introduction read by Jennifer Hale. I personally think Jennifer Hale did a much better job, but can't chat right now. Uh, I personally think Jennifer Hale did a much better job than the voice actress in Other M. I feel like such an asshole I don't even remember her name. But, uh, Make make your own make your own judgments. I'm going to I'm going going to play a short clip of Samus's voice actress another M and then Jennifer Hale. I personally believe Jennifer Hale would have done a much better job, uh, even though the voice direction in other M was pretty poor. Uh, a very a good voice actor can can make up for that. Although it doesn't always happen. Uh, for example, Resident Evil Degeneration, the voice direction in that movie was very poor. However, Allison Court, who was the voice actress for Claire Redfield since the character's introduction in Resident Evil 2, uh, did a fantastic job voicing her character. Not so much for the guy playing Leon. He may have been the same guy from Resident Evil 4. I think he was. But, uh, yeah, his, his delivery was pretty much dead behind the eyes. Pretty much dead robotic, monotone voice, kind of like Other M. But uh, that's a, that's sort of an example of how a good voice actor can uh, really make up for really poor, or in the cases of Degeneration, really piss-poor voice direction. I still like Degeneration. I think it's a good movie, but uh, the voice acting is really bad, except for a few standout cases, including Allison Court. I really think that... Uh, reint- because you, you are effectively reintroducing Samus to hang on I'm going to hang on Let's see offline <laughs> I got to go offline because they're like badgering me with stuff anyways I really think because you are really introdu- reintroducing uh the character to the audience you know th- this new iteration of the character with voice acting uh, through this voice acting, you're reintroducing their personality, uh, their motivations, etc. All of these things were previously told without dialogue. Um, so, why you would go opt for the most dead-behind-the-eyes robotic voice acting, I don't understand. I don't get it. Maybe they were going for... Maybe they, maybe what they were going for was they were trying to portray Samus as being shell-shocked. And I, I can go for that. Samus is someone who has not had a happy life, if you know her backstory. Very far from it, in fact. Um, so... Try, so, so if they were trying to portray her as having some amount of PTSD over the things they, that she's gone through, I'd be okay with that, but they went way overboard, to the point of making her cower and whimper in fear at Ridley after fighting him in free fall, shoving her arm cannon down his mouth, and blasting the shit out of him in Prime 3. Which was the game that came out before... the the immediate... Uh, predecessor to, not in terms of storyline, but in terms of release dates to Other M. Like, before Other M, that was the last thing you saw Samus do. That was the, one of the things people remember about Corruption, was that f- huge, epic, free-fall battle with Ridley near the beginning of the game, where Samus sticks her arm cannon in and unloads it into his mouth. You know, Samus does not fucking like Ridley. Samus has kicked his ass time and time again, and, uh, if they were trying to portray it, like, if they, if they, I can see where the original intention was. That, uh, that buzzing sound you're seeing is my, you're hearing is my new air conditioner. Hang on, I'm going to, uh. There we go. Sorry. Uh. We. I can see where the intention originally lies, because Ridley, if you don't know her backstory, uh, Samus is from a colony world called K2L, where, which was attacked by the space pirates, where she saw Ridley. She actually witnessed Ridley devouring her parents, and this is a, this is a massive source of trauma, as one would expect, to the point where, uh, in the 
in her backstory, when she sees Ridley while she's evacuating the Chozo from Zebes, when the pirates are beginning to occupy it, you know, when Mother Brain turns on the on the Chozo who created her and starts calling in the pirates to form to make this base of operation in Zebes that you storm in Zero Mission in the original Metroid. Um, while that's happening, when she spots Ridley, she snaps. She snaps all the way back to when that first happened, and she actually begs for death because she doesn't want to be eaten by him. Like, she watched her parents get eaten when she was, God, like three, four years old. Samus has not had a happy life, uh, but she has handed Ridley his ass so many times, and he's just kept coming back time and time again. He's like the boogeyman at this point. He won't die. She actually successfully killed him in Super Metroid, and he still won't die. You know, you know, if they were trying to play it as like the, the psychological horror of this thing you witnessed kill the people you love, and no matter how many times you fight it or how many times you try to destroy it or stop it, it keeps coming back and it keeps coming for you. If they were trying to play the horror of that situation, uh, which one would imagine would be like, if you were in Samus's place, you'd be fucking terrified as well if you had experienced all that and this thing just kept coming back for you. Uh, you know, he, he, he's, he, like, if, you're, if you've ever played Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, there's a game that did it right. You know, the, the horror of this thing that will not die, that keeps coming after you, that keeps chasing you and pursuing you, and want, in, its pure intention is to kill you. Like, that's... If they were trying to capture that with the scene where she freaks out and turns into a six-year-old for all of five minutes, you know, if she was... If they were trying to capture that, I understand the intention of that scene, but the execution of it was so poorly done that it it ended up become, angering people, uh, especially people who had looked up to Samus for ver a very long time. Samus is one of those seminal characters. She's the first lady of video games, really. Uh, you know, she's one of... So many people have looked up to this character for so long. And uh, then you come to uh, Other M, which it really gives... A and I... And I honestly... A really limp-wristed portrayal of this character who is probably one of the biggest badasses in all of gaming lore. You know, she, she's one of... She's one of the most powerful, uh, most cunning warriors in the Metroid universe, uh, especially if you've played Metroid... If you've suffered through Metroid Prime Hunters, you know how much of a badass Samus is, how much more badass than the universe's greatest hunters she is. Uh, so, the, the portrayal of her in Other M... It's not a, it's not a surprise between the dead voice acting and the really really uh kind of the portrayal of the character in Other M. You know, it, it's no surprise why Other M has become so controversial and angered so many people. But I'm sorry for going off off on that spiel. Uh Prime is going to follow after this, the first part of Prime and uh, now I'm going, like I said, I'm going to put a clip of the voice actress in Other M, and immediately following that, I'm going to put a clip of uh, Jennifer Hale's lost introduction to Metroid Prime. And uh, one assumes, one could assume this is Jennifer Hale as Samus talking in third person, maybe? That was an old literary device people used to use all the time, used to see it all the time in movies. Uh, characters giving introductions in third person. Um... Most people think it's just a regular, th you know, it's just a regular narration. Um, but I would like to think of this as a sample of what Jennifer Hale would have sounded like as Samus. And if you've played Mass Effect, this is another reason why I think Jennifer Hale would be better. Uh, if you've played Mass Effect and if you selected the uh, colonist and sole survivor or war hero backgrounds, you're basically playing as Samus anyways, which is one more reason why I think Jennifer Hale would be would have been amazing as Samus. I can't imagine why they didn't bother contacting her for this role, uh, or at least I don't imagine why they didn't get her, like do every whatever was possible to bring her in on this because I think she would have been phenomenal. I think if she had been 
voicing Samus, we would have seen far fewer complaints about Other M. Sure, there would still have been the writing problems. Uh, it would still be a rip-off of Fusion, and it is. Other M is Fusion. Other M is the same damn game as Fusion. There is no reason for it to exist whatsoever. But it's at its core, it's an okay game. It just has a lot of writing issues, and the voice acting sucks. But if we had had Jennifer Hale, if we had had a decent voice actress and competent voice direction uh, for this game, it probably would have... It would have smoothed over so much. It would have made this game so much better than what we got. But uh, here's the voice actress for Other M and Jennifer Hale, and I will see you guys in the first part of Metroid Prime. They found the perfect means of control and started propagating Metroids in Sector Zero. At the same time, they were conducting genetic manipulation experiments to create unfreezable Metroids. Apparently, the queen I met earlier was the first of these propagated Metroids to mature. They wanted to preserve her as a control specimen, so they had left her genes unaltered. The fact that she'd grow into a queen was something not even Madeline and her team could have predicted. Only special infants had the genetic coding to become queens. Ten years ago, below the surface of planet Zebus, the mercenaries known as space pirates were defeated by interstellar bounty hunter Samus Aran. Descending to the very core of the pirate stronghold, Samus exterminated the energy-based parasites called Metroids and defeated Mother Brain, the leader of the pirate horde. But the space pirates were far from finished. Several pirate research vessels were orbiting Zebus while Samus fought on the surface below. After the fall of Mother Brain, the ships escaped, with the hopes of finding enough resources to rebuild their forces and take their revenge. After discovering a possible pirate colony on planet Talon IV, Samus has again prepared for war, hoping to end the pirate threat forever.